how can you increase the sales and the profitability of your Google Ads campaigns? Now on Facebook ads, there is a really, really cool thing called lookalike audiences. And most likely you know about them. Lookalike audiences just take people that have performed an action on your website that you want, such as doing an add to cart or buying something from you, and Facebook goes ahead and finds similar people that look like those that performed the action on your site, right? Now, very few people know actually that there is a very similar thing to lookalike audiences for Google Ads as well. And if you want to increase the profitability of some of your campaigns, because it doesn't work with all of them, unfortunately, you should definitely know about them. And that's what we talk about in today's video. So right here, you see the dashboard at the overview uh, window of one of the accounts I manage. So this is always what you see when you enter your Google Ads account. What you need to do now in order to use or check your uh, audiences, your, your lookalike audiences on, on Google Ads basically, is you have to click on the tools section here at the top. And then you click on the audience manager in the shared library tab. And what you see here is, or what you see are all the audiences that you have stored in your Google Ads account. Now, some of them, as you see here, are, um, or some of them, as you see here, have different types. So there are similar audiences and there are also combined lists and website visitors and then things like that. Basically, all the ones that you see here at the very top, those similar audiences are basically the lookalike audiences of Google Ads. And on the right hand side here, you see multiple columns. You see size search, YouTube, display and Gmail. What this means is that for different ad products that Google has, those audiences have some have different number of people in them so you may have a campaign or you may sorry you may have a similar or you may have an audience that has no person or no people at all in the youtube category but they have like 1 million in display now that's a very unrealistic scenario but it's just something to to show you what i mean right so they have you have these four different categories and those and the audiences that you have can also have different number of people in each of these four categories now as we know out of these probably search is the category with the highest conversion rates and probably the one that most of you guys using uh, most of you guys are using out of these four of course probably the majority of you guys are actually using google shopping so what you can do now is if you have a similar audience for example that very first one here similar to general visitors this has a size of 1000 to 10000 people on search so what you can do is you can use that similar audience and you can use it in a search campaign to attract people that are actually actually similar to those that already visited your store, bought something from your store, added something to cart, etc, etc, etc. So how are those similar audiences created? Because that's probably something that many of you guys are asking yourself. Well, the good thing is that compared to Facebook, where you always have to create like custom audiences and then you have to create a look like audience manually, Google does that for you. So whenever you have an audience that is actually eligible to have a similar audience, Google will just go ahead and create that for you. Now, what does eligible mean in that case? Well, eligible means that you have a thousand people inside that audience, inside the seed audience, like for example, people who visited your site. But the tricky thing here is that those 1000 people need to have enough in common so that Google can actually create a lookalike or similar audience from that. So if you have a general store, for example, and you want to use that feature and you have a thousand people in one of your lists, but Google for some reason doesn't create a similar audience from that, this may be because the people in that audience are just too or just not similar enough. If you have a niche store, it is way more likely that Google can actually connect the dots and find similar people like them so you will see that um, depending on how many the more people you have in that audience of course the higher the chance that Google can actually find the connection and create a similar audience and once it can you will see that it starts like populating the similar audience here on that screen and if we scroll down these are all the audiences that we have in many cases you know there is no similar audience available in many cases it just takes a while but once you have them you actually have something like a lookalike audience on Facebook that can be really, really powerful. So in order to get those similar audience, of course, you need a basic audience, like for example, here, all visitors, and you do that, you create these audiences either automatically. So for some, some audiences are created by Google ads automatically already. 
else, you just create another re uh, remarketing list. So you cre create uh, an audience based on website visitors, or for example, a custom li uh, customer list that you have on your co on your computer somewhere, or a custom combination. And then later on, Google will just create those similar audiences for you. Then in the second step, once you have a similar audience that you want to use, you can go back to your campaigns and I will just go into the campaigns tab of this account right here. And now, as I said, unfortunately, you cannot use those audiences in a shopping campaign. Now, I know that most of you guys are probably using shopping ads and not search, but if you search, which, I, which is what I always recommend too, then you might want to try them out, especially if you have search campaigns that are not performing that well, especially if you have search campaigns that have like a very broad scope, you should go ahead and try them. So if we go into this random search campaign that we have right here, which is, you know, spending okay money, uh, $140 in the past seven days, well, not too much, but at least, you know, I can use it to show you. You go to the left hand side, you click the audiences tab, and then you click add audiences. And what you can do now is you can either use, um, you know, you can use that uh, to observe people or to target them. So observation is something where you can actually look at some, a few different audiences. So let's say I want to observe these three audiences here, right? The parents of grade schoolers, of teens and of preschoolers. Basically what happens is that as soon as I actually observe those audiences, Google will start to give me data on how these three perform in that campaign. So technically it's something that you should add to most campaigns in order to find out what are some useful audiences for them. It doesn't always make sense if you have a very low spend on the campaign, it doesn't make sense. And of course you should only pick those that are somewhat relevant. However, what we want to do in our case is actually want to target. We don't want to observe, we want to actually target people. So we want to target an audience and only show to that audience. And in order to do that, we can go here to browse and we can then go ahead and we use a uh, remarketing and similar audience. In our case, similar audience of, for example, and you see that in this case, they are very, very small, but let's see what we got here. Okay, so the biggest is similar to general visitors, 2.1K. Now you can go ahead, you can tick this box and now this search ad will only be displayed to that similar audience, all right? And that's a really, really powerful thing because it means that now people not only have to look for the product itself, they also need to meet the criteria that we specify. So they need to be similar to those people that visit our store, which makes it a little more likely that they will actually convert. Now, you probably guessed it, if you use that feature, your reach will massively, massively decrease. So when is the time this actually makes sense? Well, there are two real situations where you should consider using that feature. The first situation is when you have a massively broad niche, right? Let's say you are in a general cosmetic space or you sell general furniture or, uh, you know, you sell um, a product where there is just massive, massive, massive search volume. In that case, you can actually go ahead and you can just try if a similar audience will not decrease your or if a similar audience will not decrease your reach to a point where it just doesn't make sense anymore. So if, if there is 100,000 searches a month um, for something and you have a big similar audience, layering these two might still give you a whole lot of impressions still. The second situation is if you want to try broad match keywords. So normally, most of the time, I recommend that you should, if you run a search campaign, you use like broad match modifier, exact match, phrase match, and not broad match, uh, normal broad match keywords. But if you layer your keywords with those similar audiences, then you can actually try general keywords because then maybe, or, or broad match keywords, because then maybe because of the layering process, you still get more relevant people to your site. Now that's something that you really need to test. It's not something that you should like apply to all your search campaigns right away now. You should do it like in an isolated way. You can test it in one campaign, you can test it in one ad group and see like how it actually performs for you. But then you might realize, okay, if I layer it with one of my audiences, it actually works much, much better. And of course you can also do it with other audiences. It, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a similar audience. It can also be a normal audience, like an affinity audience for a specific product. By doing so, chances are that you can actually decrease your CPA, your cost per purchase, basically your cost to acquire a customer. And of course, that's something that is really, really useful. Well, pretty much all the time, but especially if you are in a competitive niche or if you are in a very, very broad niche. So that was my information video on similar audiences and how to actually use them. As I said, I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you didn't know about them before so that this was some like new stuff for you today. And if you want to learn 
many 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 more strategies and actionable tactics and stuff like that that you can implement in your google ads business right away in order to get more sales to your e-commerce business you should check out the link in the description that i pasted there where you can actually check out my services and trainings that you can use to really take your e-commerce sales to the next level using google ads in a way that probably 95 of your competitors or 95 percent not 95 uh, competitors 95 percent of them are actually not using right now so make sure to check that out if you're interested in google ads and increasing your sales in your e-commerce business also please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more and in the comments please let me know if you have used similar audiences before like did they work for you have you even been aware of that they exist and are you planning to use them now in the future